Good afternoon. We're back. This is Clintona Lindsay with Child Plus Software. In this session, we will be talking about the Child Plus DRDP assessment, DRDP setup. You're probably saying, what does DRDP stand for? It stands for the Desired Results Developmental Profile. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. So let's talk about setting up the DRDP. When setting it up, this will be set up by your IT, your system admin, or your Child Plus admin, because you may or may not have access to certain tabs in Child Plus. So I'm going to start with my setup, my security, and then my security settings. Now, when setting up the DRDP, we're setting it up through our desktop. And then once we set it up, it will take you to our mobile and whatever device you have it on the mobile, which is browser based. Here is where we want to check this box, allow users to access Child Plus using a web browser. And this is the link that they would use to get to the mobile and the DRDP. So once we go here, we will go back to our setup. Then we would go back to security and go to our user security group. You guys all should have a group set up. And what this is, you're allowing each one of these groups to have certain um, access to Child Plus. When I click on my education managers, they will have, it will show me here that this is a green check mark, meaning they have full access to all of these modules. When I right click, I'm able to give them full access, meaning the green check mark, or view only or no access. So here's just showing this red circle, but at the very bottom of my screen, the green check mark, the view only, and the no access, meaning they will not even see it. So the education manager, you would get with your, whoever will do up your setup for Child Plus. Now we're not leaving the teachers out because they're the ones and or will be doing the uh, DRDP assessment on the participants. I'm just giving you an example of being clicky a lot. So here my teachers will not have access, meaning they won't accidentally delete uh, an assessment. So this is where we will set up our groups and allow them to have whatever access, whether it's full, view only, or no access at all. Then I'm going to go back to my setup and go to my module setup, and now I'm going to go to my DRDP. Now, in Child Plus, we have already set it up. Child Plus DRDP has been activated, will remain. It's okay, you can call the 1-800 number and say, when did my license expire? We have it right here on the screen for you. Now, for my California users that are online, this is for our organization, we'll be exporting DRDP data from Child Plus for import into Child Plus DRDP online. This is for my California agencies only. And you have a link as well, and you can also make this a shortcut for the users to get to it instead of having to come here each time. You can also copy it to the clipboard and email it to your staff. So that is all behind the scene. Next, we have our school year specific settings. This allows you to set up any programs in your uh, programs, whether it's early Head Start, home base, Head Start, and preschool. And yes, these are customizable. You are able to set whatever parameter dates that you want. These are just some examples that we have in Child Plus. So how to get started? I'm going to simply click on Add Schedule for 1920. There are two options you have here. You can add a brand new blank schedule, meaning we have to go through naming it, or we're able to make a copy of an existing. So let's say the school year is ending. We know that. And instead of the education manager, uh, happening, oh, I got to type it all over again. No, we made it very convenient. You're able to make a copy, and all you're going to do is just change it to from 1920 to 20 to 21 school year. You're making a copy of your existing. So these are your two options when adding a schedule. 
So let's pretend I clicked OK. And then I'm going to double click here. So when you click OK, this is where it's going to bring you. Rating schedule. You want to give it a name. Uh, we kept it simple. HS for Head Start, EHS for Early Head Start, Home Base, Pre-K. For the description, just a general description of this schedule. It could be your annual. Um, for your annual assessment, it could be your Head Start assessment. Just a general description uh, about this uh, schedule. Next, let's talk about scheduling the type. All assessments are due at the end of each assessment period or the first assessment is due. Now, as a program, you determine the number of days, calendar days, after enrollment or entry into the program or program term. Let me repeat that. As a program, now this is just an example that we're showing you, but as a program, you decide how many days after enrollment or entry date that you want to do your first assessment, whether it's for your program or your program term. Then next we have, when is the second one due? How many days from the first one? Calendar days after the previous assessment is due or completed. And then we have some um, definition here. Choose program if the due date timer continues from one program turn to the next or choose program turn if each child should be assessed 60 days from the beginning of each program turn. So while a program, of course, will be your Head Start, Early Head Start, or your program turn would be your 19, 20, 20, 21. Moving right along, assessment periods. So remember, um, from the first screen, was telling you how to name it. So here we have fall, winter, spring, and summer. Why is there a summer? Some programs, as they would say, have a year-round program, so it might be their early head start, or they might have um, uh, other kids that are there during the summer, and they want to assess them. So we have the enrollment cutoff date and end date. And as a program, you decide, so notice I will fall starts October the 15th all the way through January. And then our winter starts in January all the way through February. And then we have our spring, which starts in February all the way through May. And if you have, as you say, your year-round program, summer might start, uh, let's say, June through August or June through July. So it's just, again, a definition here. The enrollment cutoff date must be on or before the end date. Or this end date assessment period, teachers should finalize. My teachers, you hear me? You should finalize the rating by this day for all children who are due at the end of each period. And then, of course, we have our naming convention. Assessment records in this schedule will be referred to by, we have it now, assessment period name, example, fall 2019. But if I click this radio, assessment numbers, assessment number one, do we want to restart it for each program term, each program, each school year, or never? Let's keep it simple and leave it right here. Ta-da, went away. Let's just keep it simple. Assessment period. Now, again, it is still up to the program. You can customize it, but I'm just referring back when I was in Head Start, and mm, that was a lot to do. But let's just keep it simple, okay? Now, recommended observation. I know I sound excited about this. I love it. I love it all. But this right here is just like a little tickler for me and all of my teachers but the education managers, I can see you guys now doing the happy dance. The recommended number of observation per measure is, we have the number one in here. Use the DRDP monitoring report and teacher's restriction. Now, my education manager, listen to this. If a teacher attempts to rate a measure with less than the recommended number, I know it. You guys can't wait to call us. Of observation during the assessment period, 
they're going to get a prompt that says prohibit them from rating or notify them but still allow them to rate. Now, you're probably saying, why is she sounding so excited? Because I know what it would do, which you guys will see this in the next three webinars when you're actually in the DRDP. This is just to get you started. But this is a good area right here that I'm able to default if a teacher attempts to rate a measure with less than whatever I put in here. Okay. I'm still excited. Moving along. The DRDP view, specify which DRDP view can potentially be used with this schedule. Now, we have several different views here. If you look closely, we have infants and toddler comprehensive view. We have infants and toddler essential. We have preschool comprehensive, fundamental, and essential. I have my coworkers, Jose and Alicia, who's going to elaborate just a little more about the different views. Miss Alicia? Good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Alicia Hood. And as Contona stated, for your infant toddler views, you have two options to choose from. You can choose your comprehensive as well as your essential view during your setup. However, you must default to at least one of the views. So you can select both views for your rating schedule, but you will need to default to at least one of the views. The all of our DRDP views cover children birth to age five, including our dual language learners and children with disabilities. Jose? It's called DRDP views. As you can see there, the comprehensive view, this focuses on the full range of learning and development that early childhood curriculum generally covers. Your fundamental view, this one addresses the five domains of school readiness and meets the needs of the Office of Special Education Programs reporting for children with IEPs. And of course, we have our essential view, which focuses on selected measures within selected domains. Thank you. Thumbs up. You guys got it. So as Alicia also stated, you do have to uh, select uh, one of the views. However, under the actual, in the mobile, um, under the actual DRDP, if you have three-year-olds that you want to do the uh, fundamental, not the essential, then under that screen is where you can select another view. But here you do have to default to one of them. Okay, lastly we have the statewide identifier. This is your program, your education manager, your program would know if you have a statewide identifier um, in Child Plus. We do have a Child Plus alternate ID field that you can put that number in or if you have the letters that you able, you're able to add. Uh, this is for those programs who have to report their state pre-K participants are the ones that they have to track from elementary, middle, and high school. So again, as a program, you would know if you have a statewide identifier. So now that we've gone through all of that, now we're going to pretend, I'm going to pretend I click save, and now I have all of my ratings scheduled. One last thing we have to do, assign over here is where if you want to assign rating schedules to the classroom by simply just clicking which classrooms you want to assign, then we have the assigned schedule. We select Head Start, and then you would click Assign, give you a pop-up. Are you sure you want to assign schedule Head Start to the one selected when I select Yes, and then it'll show me over here.